If we have no peace, it is because we've forgotten that we belong to each other. This is Walking Your Talk, a personal development podcast about leadership, authenticity and courage. I'm Carolyn Taylor, and I've spent my life working with leaders in organizations on how to change their culture. But this is much more personal. If you want to be known as someone who walks your talk at work and beyond, then this podcast is for you. I chose that quote from Mother Teresa because this is the first of a series of podcasts that I've called One Team, which I think is going to expand your view about that concept and show you some amazingly important skills and mindsets that it requires to actually think with that bigger picture in mind and act accordingly. And the benefits are considerable for you, for others, for your organization, but I'll even go so far as to say for your country and even for this world. Big claim, but worthy one, I think. Let me explain first what I mean by one team and how it's different from traditional team development concepts and team skills. A simple team, and you would all be a member of some sort of team probably, has a leader, and that leader does take responsibility for the building of a good team. Team members are selected and they're encouraged, and to some extent they're directed to work as a team. So at team building events, there's an immediate sense of identity. When I'm talking about one team, I'm actually talking about working across boundaries with others who are your peers. Enterprise-wide thinking, it's often called. Considering what you're doing and deciding how it will impact others on a much broader scale and trying to do the right thing for the whole, not just for your part, and helping others to succeed in their role by giving them your support. So in those circumstances, there is no clear, immediate leader, so to speak. There is no natural organizing mechanism. And that makes it a different set of skills and mindsets. It's all very well if you're a part of a big organization to see how that would work for you. But how does this apply, for example, if you're working as a consultant, perhaps even a one-person band, or in a small company? What does one team mean for you? Well, what I've realized, and more and more as I was researching even to do this podcast, is that it actually has a meaning for everyone, because the benefits are bigger outside of the organization, potentially, than they are inside. Because we can all extend our own awareness of the communities of which we're a member. I'm a member of my extended family, for example. I'm a member of my town, of my country, of this planet. And if I extend my helicopter view far enough, I'm a member of the human race, not only today, but also in the future. So what I want to talk about in this series on one team will be a lot about organizations, because many of you are working in organizations, but the same ways of thinking and behaving are also needed beyond organizations. And that interests me just as much. So let me identify the conditions where one team can or does exist and where those who can walk that talk and think and behave that way are the most valuable contributors. One of the conditions is that you've got a group or a team who are held together in some way by a common idea or a purpose or an identity or a brand or a set of interests. So maybe they work for the same company and they are loyal to that company, or maybe they share the same set of concerns perhaps the well-being of the next generation, for example, or they share a sense of identity, they're members of the same family, or they're members of the same profession. So the stronger that sense of identity, or that purpose, or the idea, or the sense of community is, the easier it is to then build a one-team culture around that. Second point is that these groups or communities are not usually held together by a single leader. Maybe in an organization there is a CEO, but for most and in most circumstances, that person is actually too remote to be the one who holds the community's loyalty, unless they're an exceptional leader. 
more often it's actually the love of the brand or the love of the purpose of the company, the contribution that it's making to society that makes one team desirable and worth fighting for. Now this community that you'll be in for sure is actually a group of peers. You mustn't think of it as a hierarchy. And each peer, you know, they've got their own individual needs, potentially conflicting to yours, but there is a common goal, there's a common idea somewhere. And I'm not going to focus in these podcasts on what the leader has to do to try and pull a community together. I'm rather going to focus on what each individual has to do to stand up for the community and to work on behalf of the whole. Because I believe that in this scenario, it's very much self-motivated. You can't wait for some great leader to come along to pull everyone together. Because that doesn't happen when you get on the bigger scale. It happens very rarely. But this is not what I'm talking about. What I want to talk about in these podcasts is your ability to start thinking that bigger picture and having a one-team perspective on things, even if there is no one else who is necessarily pulling the community together for you. And by the way, for those of you who are team leaders, I find that an awful lot of team leaders are actually much better team leaders than they are team members. I have so many clients who put most of their attention on building their organization, building their team, and incredibly little attention on what their role is as a team member and to what extent they are contributing to the whole. And I actually find that gets more the case the more senior they are, which I think is one of the challenges in actually creating a one team organization, if that's your goal. So to really role model one team, you've actually got to broaden your worldview and you've got to be able to rise up as if in a helicopter so you can see that wider perspective. Remember the impact it had on all of us when we first saw the world from space, when we saw those first images of our planet, how it changed our sense of what it was. So that broader worldview is sometimes called an extended level of personal development. Bob Keegan talks about it. Suzanne Cook-Greuter talks about it. Don Beck talks about it in Spiral Dynamics. And once you've seen this more developed, broader view, you can never unsee it. So it actually is a permanent shift It's a change in the center of your attention or the center of your gravity. And the benefits, of course, are substantial because what often is right for your team or your part of the company may have damages far beyond, maybe in years to come. In many organizations, for example, every team wants to optimize or customize some system or process for their own benefit. But the end result for the organization Maybe that they can't talk to each other. I've got a client at the moment who's had that challenge. They can't actually achieve the synergies they're looking for. And so it damages that whole. Similarly, to tackle the damage for the environment requires not only a view of all geographies, but also a view of future generations. Right now, the most convenient thing for me to do is probably to throw all my trash in one bin. And some companies short term may make more money exploiting the environment and the community in their in short term, but longer term, no. So it's all about that worldview, local or global, today or tomorrow, us or us and them, my team or one team. How can you accelerate and broaden your worldview? And that's going to be the exercise for this week. So this is one of the broadest exercises I'll probably set you in these podcasts. But it's really going to help you to walk your talk on this. No matter which team you choose and however you choose to interpret one team. So I want you to start by considering which teams or which tribes, to use a term that Seth Godin uses, I love. Which groups do you associate with or could you associate with if you had your attention more strongly on them? And these would not be the teams that you lead, nor probably the team of which you're an immediate member in a hierarchical, traditional sense, but those with which you want to identify. Perhaps where there is a bigger idea or a bigger purpose that you align to and that you want to be a part of. Or perhaps there is a leader who is binding you around that bigger purpose. So think about, first of all, what those tribes or teams are, and then think, what is that bigger idea? What is that purpose? And how strong is it in your heart? And then what is the contribution that you could make to that? How can you better understand the needs of those other members of the community so you can act more in a one-team way? 
How can you consider that bigger picture when you make decisions that might affect others? Do you need to sit down with different people? Read more about different issues, broader issues? How can you strengthen your affinities to that bigger audience and get out of your smaller worldview? Think enterprise, think global, think future. In short, how can you find the keys to the helicopter that will give you that view? That's the exercise. So in the next three episodes of this series, I'm going to look at some of the more specific mindsets and behaviours that I have found are really present in people who are great at one team and also some of those that limit those who are not so good at it. So I look forward to exploring those with you next week. Thank you for listening today and good luck with the exercise.